You do have a decision to make though, because you have beaten a hitman, which means, as you are a fellow hitman, we sadly can't give you that 500 quid, which I know isn't ideal, but you do choose where that goes next. That money from Be More is going either on your own head, you can double up your own bounty, or you can give it to someone else. What would you like to do? Can I have a look at the player list first? Yeah, let's get the player list up so you can, uh, you can have a think. Well, I'll, I'll, I'll follow you, Jack. Here we go. Sorry, mate. That's all right. I do, yeah, you, what do you think here? I, I, no, this is your choice. I'm not going down with you. <laughs> I'll go with... Da, da, da. I'll put it on someone's head. Yeah. If it was this time tomorrow, I'd take it myself. Who are you picking? I'd pick... It's not even in the rankings order. Oh, no, that's... Uh, go on, Shane can have it. Shane Thompson, you've got 500 quid on your head. And he looks absolutely ecstatic with that. <laughs> okay, so the next thing we have to do is we have to decide your next opponent. And that one you do have two options because it's your first one. You can either go to the random draw or you can call someone out. What do you fancy? I'll call somebody out. Okay, well, come join me here, mate. And uh, that, that, that's the one, mate. You, you have a look and uh, let me know who you fancy. I'll go with Rahat. Rahat Munim, your time has come, mate. And down you come. Either way, it's Rahat that gets us underway in this match. Rahat gets the, the first chance. Really important. I know it's a short race, and I know it's a, uh, you know, it's tough when you're out there for the first time. You're playing someone that's just obviously showing he's playing world class pool like he normally does. He, he's got to he's got to take these out here because this is such a good chance. I think this guy is probably the biggest wild card in the draw because he's one of only a couple of people that aren't regular competitors on the ultimate pool circuit. The others are kind of known quantities. They may not be the top ranked players, but there's some good good qualifiers in there. I mean, this guy is actually the first few shots we've played, or he's played, have, have looked pretty solid. Yeah, you don't always see this from players out there for the first time. Looking, he looks comfortable. I know it's, I'm going off body language and a couple of shots he's played, but he, he looks very comfortable in this environment, which isn't easy to do when you're doing it for the first time. No, and I mean, as, as Jamie was saying to him out there, he probably expected to be out there sooner than he was. And which I think has probably done him a favour because he's got to watch a bit of pool. He probably feels like he's settled into it. I know he hasn't been playing, but just sort of being in the room watching some of it happening. He certainly cued these very well so far. Well, could Jack be ruining a, a second decision here? We're just talking about the placement of the bounty, but maybe his bigger problem is winning this match first. Yeah, I don't think. Uh Maybe he felt like he might get an easy ride. I think he now knows he won't. He'll still absolutely pack his own ability to, to win this one. But he's going to have to do it by playing some good stuff. Because what an unbelievable start for, for Rahat just to get off to a, a very quick. That's gone. Time to move on. He needs to rediscover that break and get to work here in his second match. And, oh, that last roll. At the, yeah, that's the grimace. That last roll at the bottom of the table really hurts him here. Tracking towards the corner pocket, but there was a goalkeeper there waiting for it. Still no golden breaks yet today. Yeah, still waiting. We will have some. Like we've had probably more drama than we were expecting so far. The, the picks definitely haven't played out how I would have predicted it at the beginning. No, but I'm very glad they, uh, they have played out that way. This has suddenly become an important frame for Jack. I think when he made that pick, he was probably thinking that this would be an inexperienced player who might freeze in the headlights. But if he's going to 
take out clearances like he did in the last frame. Jack knows that he's got to get these balls. That's a, a little bit of a wide. Well, I think he was trying to play the cue ball into the ball nearest the middle pocket. I don't think he. I think he couldn't quite get the pot, so he was trying to screw well, into the other ball. But I wasn't sure whether he was felt like he could play it firm and and make it thick off the red on the, the bottom cushion and then into the bottom right. But either way, I mean, he was miles away from whatever he was trying. Yeah, certainly. Well, I mean, it looked, yes, it looked very reckless. It obviously wasn't the direct pot. Obviously, wasn't what he was trying to do. But he, yeah. And also, if you look at the position of the balls, there's only one yellow that's in a, a difficult spot. And a good ball to break it out as well. Good angle now to get onto that yellow. Yeah, looking at it here. He could have played on it previously. He could have taken the right hand of the two yellows to get down there to play it second shot rather than third. I don't see that being a big issue for him if he lands with a good angle this time round. He's not got there, as he? Maybe just... He's definitely thinner on it than he wanted to be. He's played all of his shots so far with real authority. Cued very straight. This one is, as you say, got to really dig into the cue ball to make this angle. Yeah, that's no good. He's opened it up, but he's not on anything. Awkward cut back top right. Tough control of the cue ball, hampered queuing, and he needs to leave an angle to be able to come down the table. A lot going on in this next shot. Yeah, I think he's going to have to go for that cutback. He's going to lose the cue ball over towards the red and eight ball at the top of the table. Oh, he's going to come two cushions here. Two cushions, not one, because he wants that cue ball just to pop up the table, but he's thinking a good chance to sort of make it awkward for Jack if it doesn't work, which it has, but... Jack will take complete control of this frame now. Simple enough loss of turn, and, and it's his frame. Yeah, at first glance, it might have looked like he'd got him where he wanted, but that loss of turn rule means that having the pocket covered like that isn't very helpful. To me, you've got to think that the yellow to top right, as awkward as I made it sound, was the better option. And if you don't land nicely on the yellow to left centre, then maybe a double's your option. You know, there's other options out there, but the shot he took on, it was one of those shots you take on that when potentially covering the pocket gives you an advantage, but it just doesn't give you an advantage in this rule set. Well, I think there were some good things that could have happened with the cut to top right as well. He could have made it, or he could have ended up playing a loss of turn sort of almost inadvertently, which might have ended up safe, as it is. Jack's obviously in in prime position now. Jack is going to be beaten. You feel it's going to be by somebody getting off to a very good start against him, getting him under pressure. If he can get the score back to one all, I think he's going to feel like he's dodged a bit of a bullet here and can regroup and go again. Definitely one of the most focused pros out there, Jack Whelan. He's, as you say, thinking all about winning the tournament. May have missed the trick tactically with where he put the bounty, but... He's not going to take any liberties on the table. Yeah, and he'll tell you, and you go and have a conversation with him, he'll tell you how stupid calling out Declan Brennan was. He'll tell you how, how stupid calling out Arfan Dab was. And, uh, you know, he sees it in such a cleaning, in clinical way. You know, he's here to win the tournament. Yeah, it's not a moment you, you normally see small talk in the middle of the match. Jack is on the plus one, not minus one. Our graphic uh, gone a little bit astray there. I think the scorer's having a little bit of fun with Jack there, saying you're going to have to win a couple more, <laughs> more frames, get back. Turn it into a handicap <laughs> tournament. It's a handicap tournament all of a sudden. Excellent break from Farhat, who did break clear his opening break in this arena. Oh, he's giving him the frames back. How disappointing. So the scores that. are where we want it. So just a moment to where... That was clarified. The clock's just been paused. Now Rahat will come back to the table. Clearing off his own break is going to be important because Jack Whelan isn't somebody that just gives you a bunch of chances in open play. 
also needs to show that that first one was a regular occurrence. Like anybody can clear one off the brake, but the question is, can the guy keep doing it? Well, the answer is no. That was a tough opening shot that he was taking on there. And the challenge you have when you play someone at Jack's level is that, you, especially when you, you broke cleared the first one, Jack's responded, okay, it wasn't clean because he needed a couple of, well, Rahat had the first opportunity, but you got an opportunity there to to make it 2-1. And if you don't, because Jack has the next break, you are thinking 3-1 on that mistake, not 2-1. Now suddenly you look at the position of the Reds. Instead of being faced with a difficult opener, Jack had an easy opener and now the balls are all waiting for him. Meanwhile, of course, Callum Singleton still in the hot seat. He's very much enjoying the way things played out in terms of Jack beating Chris. But he's going to have another challenge, I suspect, to his throne. Jack is still favourite for this match. And then he'll have to beat one presumably randomly selected player in the third game. Yeah, it's, uh, everyone's hoping it's not them. And uh, Callum's think, hoping, he obviously knows it can't be him, but he's hoping it's one of the big players, not one of the, the qualifiers. He wants, he, he wants every chance for, for Jack not to. He'd love to see Jack not win this one, in all honesty. Yeah, we've got the mid-afternoon break coming up after one more match so Callum will enjoy his dinner if he knows there's no chance of being on for at least another three games I mean, it's tough winning three in a row you've really earned it if you, you do get your place in that chair yeah I really do like that change from last year's last man standing I think it, the, the benefit for winning three is, is excellent Right when Jack steps up to break, you know, we're really thinking he's going to go dry. You're thinking maybe he won't get left anything easy, but it seems almost inevitable that a ball will get potted. Yeah, I hope we one day get to see the sort of the stats kept over the course of a season with Ultimate Ball, because I, I think it'd be fascinating to see who has the, the highest percentage on the break. But I think, I don't know, you know, from the eye test alone, I don't know anyone that has a higher percentage of making a ball off the break than Jack Whelan. It's, it's just it's a fabulous break. One real problem to solve. May have hoped for an angle now to solve it. He may just have the angle. It looks a touch straight, but I think he can force it. It's kind of shot's easier if you've got a really natural angle, but he can just dig into this. Yeah, that having to dig into it meant that it could go wrong, and it has gone wrong. Luckily for him, it's the cannon that's gone wrong. He has still got a couple of pots available to him. So they have to come back for the ball on the right, which is not necessarily going to be that easy. There, there aren't any balls that are quite as good as the one that he's just played. So considering going for the more difficult ball long and play the cannon. And he has, and he's played that pretty well. There's a more difficult pot playing the ball long to the corner, but had the angle to go straight into the difficult one. That's good players do. He's got the frame open early on. Starting to look really confident now. Must have been a moment at the beginning of the frame when Rahat started out the way he did. One frame on the board could have been a second one. Jack would have been a bit nervous, but now it looks like normal service has been resumed for him. This has been excellent, hasn't it? It's just so clinical. He really is. He's playing some great stuff. He's in great form. He's full of confidence. And why wouldn't you, Pete? He really wants to get off the table, doesn't he? Because he's clearly one of the favourites for the tournament. He looks up for the challenge. He looks like he's approaching it in a professional way. If he wins this match and wins the next one, does he become the favourite for the tournament? Because he's then in the hot seat and he's had some table time. Yeah, I mean, he's sort of started in the top four. Obviously, that's why he had the bounty. I guess 
if you'd have done a poll at the beginning, Tom Cousins would probably have been seen as the favourite. But I mean, it would be a great moment, wouldn't it? We, we saw that moment when yeah. Neil Robone did it last year. But I think it was a very different attitude, though. Neil was clearly here for a good time. Jack, Jack really does look pretty focused on the task of actually winning the tournament. Yeah, and as we've mentioned, Jack's a full-time professional. It's how he, you know, it's how he makes his living. And you know, it would be foolish to do that because you're jeopardising potential. You know, he could cruise into, you know, who knows what. You know, we saw. Uh, Declan make fourth without playing last year you know he could be in the same boat if he was to able to get through the next match we might not see him again but last year Craig Waddingham played three matches around the same sort of time as Jack Whelan is here didn't play again until the final so the benefit for, for Jack is that you know you could get himself really nice and deep in the tournament make some good prize money before he has to play again so that's yep. why he's not going to do it but I, I tried yeah I mean I think the other factor is he doesn't have to be the one that knocks Tom out. No, it's a again, full massive yeah. tournament where he's yeah. got to beat Tom at some point. I think what you say is absolutely right. You, you want to catch him cold. The fact that there's so many other ways Tom can lose in a short race to somebody else, he kind of doesn't need to take the risk himself. Well, hopefully, well, it, getting carried away because Rahat's at the table here and he's got another good chance, although he looks a touch straight. Needs to force an angle. I had a touch more than I thought, but. It's actually not too bad. If the one on the cushion actually passes the other one, this is fine. If not, he's going to have to play the cannon. Looks like it'd be a glancing blow on the yellow, which would be no good. So he needs the one on the cushion really to go. Oh, he got the full contact. That was lovely. Yeah, I mean, I've got to say, although we've been talking a lot about Jack for obvious reasons, Rohat's turned up with a, a decent standard of play here. Yeah, he's missed a couple of... Well, that tough one off his own breaks probably kind of stands out. And maybe he could have done more against on Jack's first break, but yeah, he certainly looked the part out there, hasn't he? I feel like, you know, without sounding patronising, you always kind of want the qualifiers to give a good account. They've obviously worked very hard to, to get to this point. The fact he cleared off his own break is sort of something to leave the day with, but it looks like he's got a chance to add to it. How about this shot, though? It will feel like in his own mind, if you miss this, you're, you're done. This is to stay in it. Off the eight ball. Very nice. Lovely shot. Yeah, it was only the fact the eight ball was there that made that shot of a realistic one to go for, really. It would think it'd been a bit tough otherwise. Wow, what a good clearance. So, Jack Whelan breaks off in frame six. Almost goes without saying. Big, powerful break because that's what we see every time. Yeah, and a great chance to go and wrap this one up. I think the red right in the middle of the table goes top left. Well, clearly goes top left, and when you see the layout, you're thinking that's sort of the connection to the top half of the table. This just looks looks lovely. Really want to leave a good angle on your your last ball just to get onto the eight ball nicely although I, th I was expecting him to come a bit further up the table here but he's so short on this one I suspect that he's played it this way around on purpose it's sort of okay it does go into right center for a second I thought he was going to stick on the red and be on nothing but he's worked out Absolute prime position now. Oh, that's going to be feeling, feeling the worst now because Jack's done a lot of the hard work already in this frame. Got the sense that was his final hope. Although he still needs a good angle on his last red to get nicely on the eight ball. And he'll try and use a yellow to get that good angle. But if he slides off it and it lands three court ball the wrong way, all of a sudden it gets awkward. Lands plum. It's been a very professional performance this from Jack Again, Whelan. isn't it? Back-to-back -back performances. He did nothing wrong against Chris Melling either. He was very, very good. Hasn't really put a, a beat wrong in in two matches. And he is two matches through. Needs one more to get himself into the hot seat.